Let's speak to Alex Crowley on this and more. Alex, of course, former advisor to Boris Johnson. Afternoon to you. Hello, Ian. How are you? All good at this end. Nice to have you with us again. Um, interesting one, this, isn't it? Because there we were talking about the junior doctors wanting 35%. Rishi Sunak talked about announcements between 5 and 7%, but he also threw in the figure of 9% here as well. It's hard to keep up. What we can conclude, I think, is that doctors aren't about to get 35% anytime soon. Uh, no, they're not. Uh, and uh, it, it's, it's frankly a ridiculous thing to ask for. Um, uh, the, this is the classic trick of the unions is if, if they, they, they get to a big number by going back far enough in history and comparing what their pay is now to what the pay was 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Hey, let's go back 30 years and say that yeah. we haven't been paid enough since then. I mean, you can pick any figure that you like. Now, of course, the unions know full well that you, you ask the majority of the public and the public will always say they should be paid more. Um, what these polls never ask the public is how much tax would you be personally willing to pay in, ex in extra tax to fund these increases? True. And I think if you did ask that question, you get a very different answer. I think it was very telling that Rishi Sunak in his statement said this offer is final and he will not be bullied into extra taxes or any extra borrowing to pay for any extra increases. I think the, 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 the taxpayer who is at the moment under the greatest pressure that they've ever been yeah. uh, historically will be hoping that the Prime Minister sticks to this. You're, um, you're, you're absolutely spot on, Alex, and that to me was the key line here. This yeah. is final. He emphasised this. That doesn't mean there won't be more industrial action, but his point is that it won't change, to quote him, it won't change the decision. No, and now he's, he, now he's drawn that line in the sand. He's really got to stick to it. So if there, are, you know, if there are any more strikes, he's got to hold that line. The government have got to hold that line because if they move on that, let's say in three months' time, in six months' time, there's more strikes and the government go, OK, we're going to open this element now because we want, we want whatever union it is to stop striking, then it will make a mockery of the announcement um, today. So he, he's, he's, he's placing all of his cards on the table now. Yeah. Um, and, and now he's got to stick to it. And um, we will get this, uh, obviously, these rows that will now ensue. Police officers getting 7%, uh, but junior doctors 6%. That in itself will create some kind of debate. You know, why are they more important than us? Uh, it's, it's not going to end here. It may have drawn a line under some of it. We know, as Rishi Sunak announced, that those teacher strikes have been called off. So it might placate that one particular area, but you can just see a bit of a storm coming around the corner on this one, Alex. There will always be another storm. There will always be another deserving group that uh, objectively in isolation you think should get more. And there will always be a temptation to compare one group with another. And as you say, well, why does one group get, get 5 or 6% and another group gets 9%? This is why, of course, we have the pay review bodies. The whole point of setting up the pay review body was to have some kind of reasonably calm, rational analysis of, of what, what what is fair and reasonable for each particular part of the private sector. And this is why, ultimately, the Prime Minister has decided to go along with their recommendation. There was some whispers that the the government might re reject the recommendations. They haven't done that for a very good reason. Um, and so let's stick to that rational analysis. Let's not have one union playing it off against another. The, this is what the review body have said. The government have accepted the recommendations, and this is the line in the sand. That is, of course, is not going to discourage unions. The unions will do what unions do. Uh, you know, they have to stay relevant in their members' lives. Uh, and so there will be more strikes. Um, and thankfully, the teacher strike is suspended. We've lost enough days of education, thank you very much. Um, but there, there will be others. Uh, and the test is, can the government now hold the line, having said very clearly now that this is the end? Uh, one person that will probably be delighted to have seen Rishi Sunak make that announcement would be Hugh Edwards, because it's taken him off the front pages for a, a, a mini-second. Yeah. But the debate about him, the future of the BBC, the future of him at the BBC, that certainly hasn't fully gone away either. It certainly hasn't. And look, the last few days have, 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 have been very, very bad for the BBC, have obviously been bad for him personally. But, but let's just reflect on why this is such a big story, right? This is such a big story because the BBC, if there is a point of having the, a taxpayer-funded BBC, it's got to be held to a higher standard of behaviour, accountability and transparency, and particularly in the case of somebody who reads the news. We are told that the BBC News is meant to be the highest trusted news source. Uh, we have to, we all, we all have to fund the BBC on pain of imprisonment because it's meant to hold this kind of higher place in our national life. Yep. Well, fine, if we're going to have that, 
then everybody who works for it, whether they're the most famous presenter or whether they are a cleaner in one of the buildings, everyone who works for the BBC must therefore be held to a higher standard. And regardless of what the truth is of the allegations, and it's important to note, we haven't really seen a great deal of detail or evidence, but whatever the truth is, at the end of the day, he has brought this organization, this publicly funded organization, into disrepute. And you cannot do that, particularly as a news presenter. You have to be trusted by your viewers. Your viewers have to believe that you are a trustworthy yep. um, a, a individual who behaves with impeccable standards. And the moment you slip from that, even a bit, then, you know, there has to, there, there has to be consequences to that, I'm afraid. And, of course, if somebody is suffering a, a, a mental health crisis, of course we have sympathy with that. Of course we want somebody to recover from that. That's, you know, that, that's a given, uh, as it were. But it's, it, simultaneously, it, it's not a get-out-of-jail-free card either. I mean, if something untoward has happened, and I think when people keep... And I see people on social media being very defensive here. It's interesting how the tone has changed, saying, you know, mm. leave him alone, this is not fair, he's done nothing illegal. But the matter is... Is not that's the wrong focus isn't it it's not about is, illegality no and it, it, as i say he has brought the organization he represents the publicly funded organization into disrepute by by but by, by the behavior that, that, that these allegations suggest has taken place and it is noteworthy that in the statement yesterday there was no refutation of those allegations. Yeah. There was no denial. There, there was simply a line in that statement that said that he would address those allegations when he was fit to do so, which is perfectly fair enough, but there wasn't an outright denial. Mm. So as things stand, we, we have to take those allegations at face value. BBC have to conclude their internal investigation. Uh, everybody has a responsibility here uh, to, to be mindful of the impact on the person and, and, and their mental health. And that is something I think we're all aware of. But I go back to the point, it is, you're right, it isn't a get out of free jail card. Um, the, the, anybody who works for the BBC must be held to a higher standard. Or, or if we think that people who work for the BBC shouldn't be held to a higher standard anymore, then that's fine. But then it, it, we need to stop funding it through, 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 yeah, through yeah. the licensing. It's a fair point to finish on, Alex. Thank you, Alex Crowley, former advisor to Boris Johnson, with us here on Talk TV.